Welcome to the show, Matt. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. Our, our radio audience uh, unfortunately missed out on, we did a little dance during our break. It loses with something the audience. on the radio, yeah. <laughs> it does, just a, just a little bit, but you did an excellent job. I have to tell you, it was very exciting to actually see you do the dance in person. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, so I think for our listeners who aren't familiar with you, I just wanted to talk a little bit about your background. When you were working as a video game designer, what was behind the moment that you just decided to quit your job and travel the world? I sort of slowly realized over years and years that I wasn't very good at it. Oh, uh, that's a good reason. And I, I liked doing it, but I wasn't doing it very well. And, and then I sort of came to the conclusion that I'm not doing it very well because I don't really like doing it. But I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I started traveling. And then this thing fell in my lap. Right. <laughs> Just a little, a little something fell in your lap. Um, so after this, this video actually hit before YouTube even existed. Yeah. So that was, I mean, that was far more of, a comp far more of an accomplishment than it would have been, you know, say, you know, a week ago. Right. Back in, yeah. This was back in 2003, right? Yeah, well, I think it'd be a lot different if it happened a week ago. The doors kind of closed for things like that uh, you think on the so? internet, I think. Yeah, the, it's a lot different now. But, you know, so yeah, I put the video out in like 2004, and there was no YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and it did what it could do, but YouTube sort of lit the fire and made it possible for videos to really get around. I found the video on YouTube. Uh, after somebody else had uploaded it and it had like 600,000 views. Yeah. And the guy, guy had created a PayPal account, matt.harding at paypal.com, and he was saying, donate money so I can make more of these videos. Oh, that's uh, crappy. That is super crappy. <laughs> well, I tracked him down and emailed him, and I said, hey, I don't know who you are, but you're not me. Knock it off. And he wrote back to me, and he said he'd collected $235, and he would <laughs> cut me in on 5% of it. <laughs> Incredibly generous of nice. him. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice offer. That is an entrepreneur that you were dealing with. <laughs> um, so after the first one, Stride, Stride Gum approached, approached you and amazingly just wanted to bankroll you. So you actually got to, they, you get to go to 42 countries in the 2006 video. And similar to, to the first video that you did, you're dancing in front of a lot of, of monuments in that one, but you get to Rwanda and something different happened. Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, so when, I, when Stride came and said, hey, we like what you did, would you do it again? And I said, okay, pay me. And they said, sure. That's that story, in a nutshell. Uh, I, <laughs> I got to travel around the world, and, and the idea at that point was, I'll go stand in front of a monument or a building or landmark, do my dance, and, and that'll be fun. Uh, and I got to Rwanda, and there really isn't a lot of things in Rwanda that you want to dance in front of. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's just people. There's a yeah. lot of people. And so I thought, all right, well, I'll, I'll just dance with some people. So I went to this village, and uh, I didn't, they, they didn't speak English, and I didn't speak Kinder Rwandan and, or French. And so I just started dancing. Mm -hmm. And the kids just immediately started dancing, too. Immediately. I didn't need to explain anything. And I ended up getting by far my favorite shot from that whole six months of travel. So I finished that, and I thought, well, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. People are way more interesting than... Taj Mahals and pyramids. I need to, and so then I went back to Stride and I said, "Hey, Stride, you need to send me around the world again." Because <laughs> oh, I was doing it wrong. We, we just, you know what? We can't fix it in post. <laughs> I'm gonna have to reshoot. Yeah. And they said, "Okay, <laughs> right." Yeah. Well, what's what's interesting is watching you in some of the videos. Uh, you're you're showing them your dance, which mm -hmm. is incredibly difficult to learn. And then in other videos, uh, there's a great video of you in Papua New Guinea where it appears that kind of you guys are trading dances, you're doing a little bit of, of what they do. What does that feel like to be halfway around the world and teaching people this dance that you've sort of been doing your whole life, this kind of jackassy dance? Well. <laughs> all, all due respect. Oh, none taken, no, no, no offense taken. You know, well, after, actually after a while, it did start feeling kind of weird because it's like, hey everybody, uh, Here's my dance, which you're now going to do. And, and after years and years of it, I started realizing that's really not what travel's about. Travel isn't about going across the planet to make people do a thing that you do. Yeah. Uh, and so I decided to make this video where I would learn other people's dances and bring different dances that I'd learned and teach them. Um, but I also didn't want to make the It's a Small World ride, where the people of India are doing the dance they do in India. The right. people of Papua New Guinea are doing the dance they do in Papua New Guinea, because that's not the world that 
I, I see when I travel. What I see is all of this cross-pollination going on. Everybody's taking from other people and making it into new things. So the idea for this last video was just to make a big mess of, of all these different, get, get them doing the hitchhiker, get the Huli Wigman in Papua New Guinea doing the hitchhiker, and then <laughs> take the dance they do in Papua New Guinea and bring that to Iceland and see what happens. And mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. Well, yeah, I mean, this was a, this was a much bigger production this time. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned um, really that the, that the past videos hadn't really said what you wanted to say. And was what you wanted to say with this video this, this thing about cross-pollination and well, that with and the 2012 video, which just came out actually fairly yeah. recently. Yeah, 2012 just came out in June. The, the other thing I really wanted to say with the last video um, that I didn't get a chance, actually, in the previous videos, I had to sign a little thing in the contract which said that I would not go to certain countries that we have trade sanctions with and that are dangerous. And, and that kind of bugged me. That sort of stuck in my side. I got to travel around the world and see all these great places, but I couldn't go to North Korea. I couldn't go to Pakistan. And it kind of felt like the most useful thing I have to say with these videos is that those places are just like everywhere else. Mm -hmm. There are people, I mean, what you see on the news is not the whole picture. There are people there who are laughing, having fun, goofing around just like everywhere else. So that was the thing I really wanted to get out of the way with this video, was including the places that we think of as not like us, as, as other, as dangerous. Well, and, and you say actually on your website um, that the world is a lot safer than people make it out to be. I had a great time in Afghanistan. Yeah. I had a great time in North Korea. I'm not saying that everybody does, um, but I'm... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. But, I mean, I, I was able to walk down the street in Kabul and, and visit a market, and people were really friend me, friendly with me. Mm -hmm. I would say they even went out of their way to be extra especially friend friendly because here's an American who's wandering around just taking it in. Um, you know, and I'm not, uh, I'm not my country. I'm not my culture. I'm me, and they're them. And, uh, and so the video is about sort of engaging as people and not as nationalities. Well, it's, it's interesting. There, there's, an ethno there's an ethnomusicologist named Joseph Jordania. I think we're all familiar with Joseph, aren't we, everybody? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> what Joseph has recently suggested is that he believes that dance was originally designed at the early stages of our evolution to put groups of people into a trance prior to battle. Essentially, dance was created to create a collective identity for these people, have them lose their own personal identity do you, as sort of, you're sort of a world dance expert at this point. Would you agree with him on that? Yeah, I think there's something there. I think, I think there's something about tribes uh, that we've got to kind of work through because yeah. it's 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 screwing us up. You know, we're all in these different tribes, and and that separates us from each other. And and the video is my attempt of. This is gonna sound really corny. I'm sorry, folks. This is why I dance and don't talk. Make us all one tribe. You know, because we are, you know, we're not separate little townships and provinces now. We are, when you buy a cup of coffee, you're affecting the economies in Ethiopia or, you know, the Caribbean, wherever that coffee bean came from. When you get a tank of gas, for God's sake, you're affecting co economies all over the world. Uh, so we've got to engage with each other on a, on a global level because we can't just keep our heads in the sand anymore. Right. So you now have a wife and you have a son, right? Um, which probably makes traveling a little bit more differently, difficult, but your wife actually helps to produce the videos. Um, what would you and say- And the children. And the children. <laughs> yeah, she did a good job of that. <laughs> she helps. So what would be the one thing that you've learned on your travels that you would want your son to know? Uh, that, that thing I just said. <laughs> Please don't make me say it again. <laughs> so, uh, so what's next for you? More dancing? More? <laughs> um, really, I, I got some, some staying at home time to catch up on now that I've got a son and uh, dog needs walking and things like that. Melissa works. She's got a job. So somebody's got to be home. And I'm happy to do that for a while. Well, the video, uh, you can watch the videos at wherethehellismat.com. You can also just do a search on YouTube for Where the Hell is Matt. And we can't properly, I think, uh, let you know the joy that is involved in, these, in the making of these videos. And if you can watch this video without a giant smile on your face or possibly crying at the end, then you are a robot. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Matt Harding from wherethehellismatt.com. Mm -hmm.